there are a number of true freshmen making a big impact at Oklahoma Sooners spring practice this year. And we need to talk about why it is that's a good thing for Sooner fans, hoping that these guys get it together in year one of SEC play. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football's Sooner Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, particularly Oklahoma Sooner football, you're definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football's Sooner Magic Podcast. You know it's got to be spring when hype and probably a little bit of overreaction is at a fever pitch surrounding Oklahoma spring football practice. This year, of course, is no different. And a number of true freshmen are finding themselves in the middle of that hype train, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, when it comes to what we have seen out of them early on in the spring season. Now, you probably had to expect a little bit of this when it came to the power line. Guys like Nigel Smith, David Stone, Jaden Jackson, Wyatt Gilmore, Danny Okoye. You're going to hear a lot of those kind of things coming out because these are the guys that a lot of people are super excited to see. Probably the best defensive line haul in Oklahoma history. But somebody that probably wasn't expected to show up as big as he has apparently in the first couple of weeks of spring season is safety and true freshman out of Dayton, Ohio, Reggie Powers, who Hasn't really been making a huge impact at the safety position, but rather at the corner position. He's been running a lot with the ones in both seven on seven and in team drills. In fact, he and Jackson have been getting a lion's share from what we understand at the number one spot in team drills for their respective positions, right? Now, before we get too crazy, there's probably a few reasons for this that, and it, you know, it makes a lot of sense why you would probably see some freshman guys stepping up. There's a few reasons, okay? Number one, when you start talking about the corner position, right? Woody Washington, a fifth-year senior, now, you know, looking to, as he talked about in the last few weeks, to kind of show his versatility, play some of that nickel and slot corner position to kind of add to his repertoire before he heads into the draft after this season. Then there's also the fact Gentry Williams not even playing in the spring right now. You also have the idea that a guy like Kendall Dolby, who came in as the number one cornerback out of Juco football last season, um, he ended up playing an awful lot of Cheetah himself. And with Justin Harrington also being out for the spring, recovering from his ACL tear last year during the Texas game, you know, that that's shifting a lot of these guys in, you know, to different positions. And with new defensive coordinator Zach Alley kind of really uh, experimenting a lot with some different personnel packages, some uh, formations that most people haven't seen a whole lot of. That's another reason why you could see this kind of happening. You know, another reason is, at least as far as powers goes, is probably just that he's that damn good. And I think that that's probably a big reason for a lot of this, guys. This is year three under Brent Venables. Year three is when you start seeing some of that talent, some of that cream rise to the top. And after what we saw last year, the improvements that they made and the fact that they're headed to the SEC, which most guys want to play in the SEC because it's a more direct path to the NFL than any other conference in the country. That's just a fact, okay? But as I said, David Stone and Jaden Jackson in particular have made big impressions in what little time we have seen them out on the field uh, at least, you know, what the little clips we've seen here and there on Twitter, uh, the stuff coming from the Sooner Scoop guys, as well as, you know, your guys over at OU Insider, some of the other websites that are getting a lot of film, right? But they only allowed them to get about 45 minutes of film one day, maybe. 
uh, to, to really see some of it. So you could probably stand to pump the brakes just a little bit, even though I know that that's a lot to ask for from a Sooner fan. Uh, as Stoya was saying on Twitter earlier, ton of coaches out there that can tell who's good and who sucks by looking at one 15-second clip on Twitter. I digress. Uh, Is your wireless company giving you a case of the What in the Why does my wireless feel so expensive? Question. Why are we paying so much for wireless service? Is it for speed, coverage, data, 5G access, mobile hotspot? Well, our new partners at Hall of Fame College Football, Mint Mobile, they have all these features. And for way, way less than big wireless, like way, way less, as low as $15 a month. You can get signed up and activate your service immediately without having to leave your home. Mint Mobile reimagined the wireless process, making it easy and online. No more stores, no salespeople, and no given. With Mint Mobile, you get all the features you become accustomed to with Big Wireless, the nation's largest 5G network, and service for as low as $15 a month. To start saving today, just log on to our partner website, trymintmobile.com slash HOF. Again, that's trymintmobile.com slash HOF. You can get signed up and activate your service immediately. Big Wireless wants you to believe they're the only option. Here's the deal. Big Wireless. You get comparable service to Big Wireless. You don't have to talk to a salesperson to do it. Largest 5G network in the country, as low as $15 a month. Sign up for Mint Mobile today so you can stop getting by Big Wireless. Could Powers be a starter or at the very least an impact player as a true freshman? Okay. But again, I would say pump the brakes a little bit. You do have those injuries that we talked about in the secondary that have kept this keeping a couple of guys out of spring practices and therefore moving some other guys around as well. But you are seeing a significant amount of experimenting with personnel packages with certain looks that Zach Alley wanted to bring into the fold. Um, Again, we, we talked about Woody Washington moving a lot to the nickel position. Desan McCullough is another guy that uh, rather than play Cheetah or that defensive end, you're seeing him slide in at the wheel linebacker position, which is an inside linebacker position for the Sooners a lot. He talked about earlier in the week that that's a comfortable position for him to play at. Kendall Dolby is likely playing the lion's share of Cheetah reps right now, uh, particularly with Harrington out until the fall as well. And then, you know, as we talked about, those experimental packages that, that Zach Alley's brought in, uh, you know, they, there's reported to include some packages that could have anywhere from five to seven defensive backs in the game at a certain time. You've also, as I said, Makari Vickers is out, you know, dinged up a little bit. Hadn't seen a ton of him, from what I understand, in spring so far. Nothing, nothing in particular, just a little banged up. But you should see more of him as the spring goes along and definitely into the fall as well. Josiah Wagner's another guy that we've heard has looked really good during the spring. You also have guys like Kenai Walker, who towards the end of last season, with Gentry out a lot, he went through some growing pains, but he also looked really good at times as well. Jacoby Johnson, who a lot of people believe is really putting himself in a position to be a starting corner as well. He's got a lot of length, a lot of speed, and athleticism, and it looks like he could be kind of kind of turning that corner also. Again, guys, you may simply be seeing, again, I think a lot of it may just flat out be that Powers is that good. The dude brings heat. 
He loves to hit. He's speed. He seems to have a knack for getting his nose on the football, getting a lot of interceptions. You know, he was a turnover machine out in Dayton at Centerville High School. All of that being said, what this is a clear indicator for to me is just the kind of players that you're going to continue to see Brent Venables and this recruiting machine that he's built bringing into the program, particularly now that they're headed into the SEC, where the best players in the country want to play because they have the best opportunity to play at the next level. Venables, with the way that his players have performed not only at Oklahoma, but at Clemson uh, in, in two longtime stints as defensive coordinator, He's got a track record of putting guys in the league. And so you're going to continue to see these kind of recruiting classes, as you can tell, even early on right now in the recruiting that he's continuing to do. Look, the guy is building a football team, a football team, not just a one side of the ball, get down and score a lot of points. He's building a football team that is built on defensive firepower first and bolstered by an also explosive offense not the other way around. We don't have to go too far down the Jackson, Stone, Nigel Smith rabbit hole here because we know you can argue either way for whether it's a good thing that the new kids seem to be kind of dominating even upperclassmen on the offensive line or whether that's a bad sign, right? You could lean either way you want to depending on what kind of person you are right now. The truth is we're still talking about spring football. But I would tell you that despite being upperclassmen, there's a lot of newness on that offensive line, and therefore, Smith, Stone, Jackson are, not to mention the fact that Smith, Stone, and Jackson are different. They're just different kinds of freshmen, folks. That's all there is to it. When you have to compete with them day after day, though, you're going to become stronger, sharper, more, more battle-tested, look, better prepared for the rigors of the SEC. And because these guys are SEC talents, in all likelihood, the freshmen probably won't be starters on August 31st when Oklahoma opens its first season in the SEC conference hosting non-conference Temple. Okay? Then again, a couple of them might be because they're just those dudes. If that's the case, I look at whatever happens in the spring and during this thing as a positive deal when it comes to the offensive line. If these guys are that good, then this can only make even an inexperienced offensive line nasty. Because if you could deal with these guys day after day, and I'm going to add in guys like DeJon Terry, because this dude is a real deal SEC defensive line guy, right? Let's not leave out guys like DeJon Terry, Grayson Halton, G-Baby Grayson Halton, um, even guys like, um, Devon Sears out of North Texas. We expect that these guys are probably going to continue to take steps forward. And we know that with guys like, like Nigel Smith, like David Stone and Jaden Jackson, plus having PJ out and Ethan Downs now in his, his final season at OU, you should have one of the deeper defensive lines out there. Not to mention the fact they're probably going to be looking to add a couple more when the spring portal opens up. Let's face it, folks. The IMG twins, Jaden Jackson and David Stone, as well as a Hall of Fame college football favorite, Nigel Smith, are amongst, they were amongst the most sought-after prospects in the country for a reason. They come in with SEC measurables, SEC power, SEC athleticism on day one. You have to believe that Todd Bate, Miguel Chavis, and Brent Venables are going to let those guys eat if they're ready to eat. That's just how it is. And in the end, this is what you were expecting out of this Oklahoma staff. They're going to be tilted towards defense. And you know why? Because they needed to be. And when you start getting guys like this in here, this is what you get. Your offensive lines always take a lot longer to gel than a def particularly a defensive line. It's a dance that has to be done together. Individual play on the offensive line is not really the way that it works, right? But that being said, when you got to go up against guys like this, add in DeJon Terry, add in Grayson Halton, add in these guys like Devon Sears that you know are chomping at the bit to make their mark as well 
in the SEC in year one, and you are going to have an offensive line that's probably going to be pretty damn good. To me, I look at it as a positive if you're going to get a lot of contribution from these guys and still have some of these guys coming in like an expected, you know, you've got a couple of guys that are being offered and and are supposed to be taking visits to OU um, before the spring game on April 20th. But I look at it, this as a positive for the O-line as well because of the fact that when you're playing against the type of talent that we're talking about, right, on day one from the defensive line perspective in the trenches or even guys like Reggie Powers in the secondary, you have to look at it as a good thing for the other side of the ball. You got to remember that a lot of times people will sit there and talk about, well, it's, it's that age old thing, right? When you get into that spring game of, you know, do you want the offense to look great or do you want the defense to look great? Or, I mean, I mean, what do you, what's the, what's the rub there, right? If the offense looks too good, then you don't think your defense is very good. And if your defense looks too good, then you don't look like your offense is very good either. There's a lot of questions on both sides of the ball coming in. The expectation is, is, the, is that this team is led by the defense. So it shouldn't be that surprising for everybody if you're seeing them a little ahead of where the offense is, particularly just now in the first week coming off of spring break. In the O-line's case, I don't think it's a bad thing if they're getting beat up right now. First off, like I said, it's, it's a situation with the offensive line that you judge the line not by one person or, or, or even by a couple but by the entirety of the unit and how they work together, the way that they learn to dance together and, and work together as a unit, because that's the only way to really judge them, right? One-on-ones, if you get some of the athletes one-on-one with anyone, it's a bad day for them. Bill Beatonbow is going to get these guys put together, but having to go up against animals like is scattered along that defensive line, not just the freshmen, but all the way up. To the guys that are on their last few seasons, we're talking about a situation that it's only going to make them better having to go up against them day after day after day. Um, but, you know, hey, let's try to keep it under perspective. It, there's no way that we're going to know anything on day one or, you know, out of one clip of whether a guy is good or not. We're going to know what this offensive line looks like. And I know that's the concern heading in, but it doesn't mean that just because they're struggling or that you've seen them struggle on one player, maybe you're hearing that they're struggling a little bit with these guys. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be ready to rock and roll when August 31st rolls around. I wouldn't put it in those terms. And in fact, you know, clearly they, they're going to see a lot more from the coaching staff, the guys that are pros and know what they're doing. They're going to know who to put out there. Bill Beatonbow knows what he's doing with that offensive line. And again, I think iron sharpens iron. And when you've got to go up against guys like this, it's going to make you better. It's just going to make you better. So let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned. We've got another couple of videos coming up. I'm going to talk a lot about, hey, there's some more freshmen that are really killing it right now. Uh, I think that one of the guys that's standing out the most is probably true freshman, Devon Mitchell, who is really lighting up and looking like just a different kind of dude but so is the rest of that tight end room for the Sooners. We'll talk about that a little bit, along with what we're seeing out of Jackson Arnold and anything else that may be coming up as well. Stay tuned. Let me know what you think on this one. Hit that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.